All right, going to talk to you today about a really good breakfast. If you're going to have some really hard work to do, this is an old logging type of breakfast. Right here is not the breakfast, but come and I'll show you this real quick. Here we have some, this is pork here, pork chops, and uh, egg, and white kidney beans, canned kidney beans. This is actually our food for our dog, Gretchen. I make her food, and, uh, and it also has uh, some crushed eggshell powder in it. And um, which is really good for her bones and everything. So let me get her bowl here. She's of course very anxious to eat. And uh, this cost of this, you can buy fairly inexpensive meat. We usually wait till it goes on sale. If it's you know past the, the uh, time when it's considered really really fresh, it's still good meat. It's not like it's rotting or anything. But you'll get it sometimes up to three dollars off. So. You know, a cheap and expensive package of pork chops will go for just under two dollars and so you figure it out it comes out to about the cost actually a little bit less than the cost of canned dog food so in the first year of the dog's life it's important to make sure that they have good nutrition so that's why we do this so there we go we get her food ready here and um, this is the book that we use this is kind of the our guide to health for our dog. This is Dr. Pitcairn's complete guide to natural health for dogs and cats. If you have a if you have a pet that's suffering from different types of sickness, I highly recommend this book. Not being paid to say this or anything. It's just we've you know gone into a lot of this and done some study. You know, canine distemper, talking about the different types of shots, treatment, choreo recovery, you know. Gretchen knows her food's ready, so she's a bit, you know, kind of losing it right now. But all kinds of different stuff that your dog might, you know, encounter and whatever, and your cat as well. Uh, pretty good book. So, are you ready for your food, Gretchen? Okay. Come on out. out. Again, crate training is part of what we do here. Oh, man, that tail's getting big. Sit. 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 <laughs> Stay. All right. Now we ask God's blessing for the food as well as our own. Okay. Quiet. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray that you would please bless and sanctify and cleanse this food for Gretchen's sake. Help her to be a good dog. And I pray that she would uh, recover from any vaccine damage that she's had from her past. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And no, we don't vaccinate our dog either. Okay. Nutrition is the key to health and good, strong immunity, not some stupid petrochemicals that they stick into you. All right, vaccines are ridiculous. All right, let's put her food over here on her mat. Stay. This is also important that you let the dog know who is in control of the food. Gretchen. Okay. All right, and now on to actually what we're going to be making today. We're going to be making, could you go get some beans, Oliver? I'll watch One can. Can. No, can, get the, the cans of beans, please. Um, we're going to be making... This is a thing that old time logging camps would make. Uh, it's pork and beans essentially, but we kind of make it uh, meat and beans. I actually read the one time that an old logging camp, they would actually oftentimes eat five different types of meat for a meal. And the reason for that is when you're out swinging an axe and, and using a crosscut saw, it's very, very high energy intensive. You need a lot of meat. The old saying was you need stuff, something that sticks to your bones or sticks to your ribs, excuse me. Uh, meaning you, you need something that's going to stay in your system. Um, I've never seen anybody that eats, that eats vegetables or something like a vegetarian that can go out and perform the kind of really, really, really hard labor, uh, very labor intensive work of like hand tools and things uh, with vegetables. Okay, you need something that's a lot more substantial. Animal fat uh, is, is really good for you. It's also very much needed for the brain as well, okay, because your brain is fatty tissue. So if you don't have animal fats in your diet, you can get some fats from nuts and things, but you know, you are what you eat. Don't forget that. <laughs> Don't be a vegetable and a nut, in other words. Um, so, but uh, what we have here is we have two different types of beans. We have soldier beans and yellow eye beans. So if you've ever seen a soldier with yellow eyes, no, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, this, these are vegetarian beans and we're gonna take care of that. We're gonna make them non-vegetarian. Then we also have, you know, not yet. Don't take them out of the wrapper yet. Better show people. We also have uh, just a 
this is a Oktoberfest bratwurst uncured. You know, good stuff that comes from Germany actually. Available in our local grocery store. Just a sausage, pork sausage. We have. I threw out the, the package because we just used half of it at a time. This is uh, antibiotic free smoked bacon. Really, really good stuff. Very tasty. Um, fry that up. And we also have antibiotic free chicken from the other night. Some leftover chicken. Oh, um, thigh. Yep, we bake it in the oven. Oven baked chicken. And um, thighs and legs. We'll jump up and down. And uh, so we're going to have three meats in our uh, food this morning. So, really good stuff. And of course, we need an onion. Go get an onion. Oh, yep, in that way. So, uh, we fry up. What, what you do is, just to tell you the, the recipe a while, and you'll see I'll be recording here as we go through it. i got to wash this pan out. Um, but you first put in some butter or bacon grease or any kind of oil that you want, and you, you uh, slice your sausage into little chunks, which I'll show you, and you fry that up, add the onion, and then, well, actually, you would do the bacon first, and then fry up your sausage, onion, and then you add in the beans and then the chicken, leftover chicken. And uh, so we'll show you as we continue. All right, let me show you the proper way to make bacon. If you look in here, you want to lay it out as flat as possible. I like to cook it on about medium there, about five on the stove. And you want to keep it flat and you want to, you want to turn it fairly often. And uh, you don't want to just, just, you know, a lot of people just take bacon and just stir it up and whatever else. And you have some areas where it's cooked well and others where it's just kind of gummy and whatever. Mm -hmm. You want the whole thing of bacon to cook nice and flat if you can. Mm -hmm. um, and over here, what we're going to do is this is frozen. <laughs> so you can still cut it up that way. Let's go like that. And you can just get them out of there. You can have them thawed out too, it doesn't matter, but in some ways it's actually easier get that ice off of there. In some ways it's actually a little bit easier to, to slice them into little rounds like this when they're frozen. Of course you need a pretty sharp knife, which we have good knives. It's one of the things we invested in early on in our marriage. I've always been kind of a knife guy, so I know how to keep my knives sharp. It's very important to keep your knives sharp, but you just want to slice them into a little bit over a half inch, maybe three quarter of an inch thick pieces, like that. And uh, just let your bacon fry up. Keep your bacon grease when you're done with your bacon all being fried up. And of course, when your bacon's when you get it fried up, you just take it and put it right on a paper towel to absorb some of that, you know, grease off of there. So we'll be back as we continue. All right, here's how I do my bacon. I use a fork in my right hand and a spatula in my left hand, and you can just kind of get underneath it and flip it over. It's very important to keep your bacon, you know, to make sure it's, you're getting it cooked really evenly and it's not sticking. Because again, you have, you know, you're cooking with stainless steel here, not with Teflon. If you don't understand why, I haven't seen one of my other videos where I talked about the whole Teflon thing. Teflon is a toxic chemical and uh, it'll off gas and it'll also start to chip off as it, as it gets older. So you don't want to mess with Teflon pans or aluminum um, or even some of the enamel wear or whatever. You want to go with stainless steel or cast iron. Cast iron really is good. You know, baking and cast iron are, are really good together. But while we're talking about toxic chemicals, I just want to say something earlier. I mentioned about our dog's not vaccinated. It, it, our dog was vaccinated by the um, breeder that, that, you know, had her for the first few months um, but uh, we're not going to be vaccinating our dog ever um, and the reason for that is very simple and the very the be very best argument against the whole vaccination thing is um, what are the ingredients of vaccinations why don't you ever ask those questions people don't ask that they they would look at this something like this can of beans here and you look and you see um, all natural ingredients and there's your ingredients right there. You don't have to zoom in on that. But you go to the store, you look at ingredients. They're, they put ingredients on things that you buy. Um, well, why on earth would you put something injected into your bloodstream without knowing what the ingredients are? It's insanity. People are crazy in the head. 
if I if I give you this this cup of liquid, I say here, drink this. This will be good for you. You say, what's in it? Never mind, drink it. Well, that's a problem. But yet you'll go to the doctor and they say, here, let me let me put this directly into your bloodstream. We're not even talking. I mean, you you drink something that's toxic, you can vomit it out, or you can get you know diarrhea or something and expel it. Uh, it's passing through the system. You're just boom right into the bloodstream with the vaccine. It's petrochemicals. It's terribly toxic. So you know the vaccine argument ends when you just look at that simple thing. What are the ingredients? And the ingredients are all petrochemicals. They're toxic. The same kind of you know basic elements that are used to produce gasoline or oil or WD-40 or any kind of a petroleum-based product. And these things supposedly cure diseases. So if you actually do the history and you go back and you realize in the early 1900s, actually back into the 1800s we'll say, most people were doing herbal remedies or things like that and they work quite well. But see the problem is to be able to, to really corner the market, you can't really because people can go out in the woods and pick those herbs. So the whole petroleum industry was really birthing in the late 1800s, early 1900s and uh, you know they were using it for of course you know, different engines and things like that to run things. But they started to realize, hey, we can turn this stuff into medicine and make a lot of money. You see, if you really study the thing out, alchemy, um, the, the goal of alchemists, basically occult people, uh, and that's where your, your modern word chemistry comes from, but the goal of alchemy was to basically find a way to make gold. Because uh, you can't, you see. But uh, they wanted to find a way to make gold. Well. You say they never succeeded. Well, actually they did. Because they can take petrochemicals and turn them into pharmaceutical pill pills and vaccines and they make quite a bit of uh, money. Now, it's not gold, but they can get quite rich off those petrochemicals. That's why the phrase, oil is the new gold, is very prevalent. Yep, exactly. And it is. Black gold, you know, as it's also been called. Yes. Um, and, and realize again what oil is. Oil is essentially deceased organic matter, right? That was buried in the flood in the days of Noah, compressed under high pressure, turned into, into crude oil, essentially. So you have dead plants, dead animals, and dead people. And you want that injected into your bloodstream? You want to swallow it as a pill and it's going to make you better? It cannot make you better. When, is, when, did, when did you ever hear of anybody saying, here, take this vaccine, take this pharmaceutical pill, and now you're better? And you never have to get it again. Oh my no. It's symptoms management is all that they can promise you with pharmaceutical pills and vaccines. Symptoms management. You're not cured of anything. All right? And we could get, keep going off on that, but I got bacon to make. And uh, so we'll be back with you here. Looks like this one's done. Looks pretty good. Evenly cooked. You don't see any soft spots on it. Again, you want that thing as, as flat as you can. Put it over on the paper towel. Flip them over. You don't want it to get black on any part of it. And you'll see, by the way, too, get off of there. You'll see, by the way, too, that see how it's kind of, yep, that one looks good. You just want to flip these over into the area where they're cooking good. Careful that the grease doesn't splash you like that. <laughs> Got burned there on my hand, you can see, the other day. I'm a casualty of bacon breakfasts. But, uh, this, all this down in here, this dark and everything, you say, oh no, that's going to be a hard thing to get off. Actually, it'll come right off when we put the beans in and we start cooking everything else. I'll show you how to do that. So it comes out really clean. But uh, we'll continue. Okay, bacon's just about done. Looks like we're pretty much finished up here. That one's definitely done. Put it on the pile. You don't want to let your bacon grease sit for too long because it'll smoke like that. And, uh, I guess if you let it go for really long, it could probably catch on fire, but don't let it go that long. Okay, that off to the side. I have a little bit of a paper towel there. And then all you do is just uh, see if I can do this with my, I'll do it with my other hand so you can see what I'm doing. Just take your jar of bacon grease right there and you want to just pour in most of it to save for other recipes later. But you want to keep enough bacon grease in there. Wipe it off so it doesn't burn when you put it back on the burner. You want to keep it in there, or there's enough bacon grease in there to cover the bottom. So again, it doesn't stuff doesn't stick. Put your 
lid on. Do not touch this area right here where the baking grease is liquefied because that's very, very hot. Touch in underneath it and it'll be nice and cool. You do not need to refrigerate this, okay? I have been doing this for a while. We do not refrigerate it. Just sit it on a shelf and put it back in there and you'll, you'll be fine. Now, you will put your frying pan back on the stove. I have my onion cut up here and I don't want to put that in quite yet. Again, just leave it on the, the same heat setting, about number five on your stove. Push this right in, like that. Okay, we'll do the onion here in a little bit. But you just want to move these around. I should have probably left a little bit more baking grease in there. But all you're going to do here is just brown these a little bit. Then you add in the onion. And these will continue to cook throughout the process. Come on, split up. They're building community, Dad. Well, I'm breaking them up. Not supposed to be together. Supposed to be separate. Anyhow, uh, um, so we're going to do this for a little bit. Brown these up a little. Just make sure you keep stirring them. And if you do like I did there, you can always add a little bit more grease in or a little bit of olive oil or butter or whatever else you want. And uh, and you don't have to you don't have to put three different types of meat in. Okay, um, we're just doing it because we have a big day ahead of us. We're actually going to be deconstructing an old school bus, and uh, we're taking the seats out today. And there's different ways to do it. We've done it in the past, and um, uh, you can grind the heads of the Basically where the, the seats bolt to the floor, there have to be bolts that go right down through into the frame cross members or whatever, or just the underbody, whatever. And here in Northern Maine, because they put uh, junk all over the roads, there's a calcium chloride. That's one of them. Probably yeah. sodium chloride and maybe even magnesium chloride now. Yeah. But it really rusts things really bad. And um, so what happens is these nuts get totally rusted onto the bolts and they, you can't just get underneath there. And, and turn them out. And so a quick way to do it is just to get an angle grinder and grind the heads of the bolts off. But if there's a lot of debris and stuff, you can, you know, you get sparks flying all over the place on the inside of the bus from doing it that way. So I did it last time. So what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna try to um, get in underneath the thing and actually I have a breaker bar, you know, not to be confused with a certain uh, false profit name breaker, but you put the thing on and then you can actually just snap the bolts off. They're not real big in diameter. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to need a lot of energy crawling around underneath the bus in the snow and um, breaking bolts off. <laughs> so uh, now don't pick on me, Dad. I've, I've broken a few bolts already. Yep. With the Lord's help, I mm -hmm. yeah, don't pick We were pick doing it the me. other day and she was breaking some. So, but, uh, so we're going to fry these up. You can see here they're getting, they're already starting to get you know, browned up a little bit. Gonna get a good coating on these. And these ones have cheese in them, so you have to be careful to definitely keep them moving because the cheese will come out and it'll start, they'll start to stick to the frying pan. But just keep them moving around. And then we'll come back here and we'll put the onion in. All right, we're getting them pretty much where we want them here. It's about the color that you want, kind of a golden brown. You can make them a little bit darker if you, if you so desire. Uh, again, it's not a real tough recipe here or anything. So you just want to make sure that they don't stick. Okay, now take the onion. You just sliced and quartered, halved and quartered. What you do, scrape it in there. This will add a little bit more liquid to the mixture as the onions kind of cook a little bit. And if, you know, depending on how you want it to come out, you can cook your onions a little bit longer or a little bit less. If you want like a little bit of crispy onion in, in with the thing, then you don't cook them as much. If you want them to be a little bit, you know, uh, you know, softer and not crunchy, well then just cook them a little bit longer. Not that difficult. Remember this is an old logging meal, old time logging meal, so they didn't they weren't exactly uh, gourmet chefs or anything in the in the logging camps. They just they knew what worked for good health and good energy and while working really hard. And that's why they did it. So, yeah, I'm gonna put 
some beans in. We like them a little bit more crunchy, the onions. We like them to be real soft and gummy. So, non-electric can opener, yes. the way to go. I've said it before in other videos, and you know, I think I did it anyhow, didn't I say it in another video? I'm pretty sure. But we actually had to redo this video because the first time it was really dark, it came out really dark. But, uh, so it could have been that video, and I don't know. I've never been a fan of the electric can opener. The cans half the time fall off and it doesn't quite work right or whatever else. That's right. So, and again, it's some other, another appliance that you have to have plugged in and cost me money. That doesn't cost you anything and it gives you a little bit of exercise. So you just take your beans, pour them right in. Make sure they shake them good, get everything out of there. Okay, that one's empty. And again, this one. And the heat, you never, you never really mess with the heat the whole time. You just kind of keep it at about five on your stove. Or whatever works for you. Don't want to have too much heat to it, and so you're burning it on the bottom. Now what will happen is, as you start to cook this, a lot of that bacon grease it looks like it's burned on down there on the bottom. You can see it's already starting to come off. You just kind of stir it, and it'll come right off. It's pretty neat. So you just want to let this cook for well, maybe five to ten minutes, about like that. And then you can add the bacon, you can add the chicken, and you have a, kind of a meat lover's uh, <laughs> beans recipe that gives you plenty of energy and um, definitely, definitely good if you're doing a lot of hard work. I don't really recommend it if you're going to be sitting at the computer all day. Um, the food we eat, uh, again, is kind of fattening food, and I know the whole ketogenic diet thing, which is great. I, I, I think it's, there's some good things to it short term, Yes. as I've said before. Um, I think long term, when you're cutting out a lot of fruit and things out of your diet, I think it's a bad idea. God designed you to have you know, some variety in your diet, so I'd be careful about sticking with something like the ketogenic plan or any other diet, really. You want to have uh, all of, uh, well, not all, but... <laughs> What God makes, you know, fruits, vegetables, and meats, grains, you know, dairy, the whole thing in your diet. Uh, again, that's another reason why I'm against vegetarianism and specifically veganism because you're uh, being commanded to abstain from meat as well as um, other things too, veganism especially. And I'm very much against that. And I don't think it's what God designed. Uh, so. But you just let this cook up for a little bit. You'll see when it's about getting done, it'll start to bubble a little bit here and there. We're not anywhere even close to that yet, but starting to take shape now. And uh, so that's going to be it. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, here you can see some of the bubbling occurring. So we're about ready here for everything else. Again, you don't want to let it cook too long because then the, the beans just turn into mush. And uh, so you really don't have to cook it real long. And um, as you can see, by the way, look down underneath there, all that burn on stuff and everything else is pretty much gone. There might be some over at the edge there a little bit, but you just scrape like that and it comes right off. Pretty neat. You can actually do dishes with your food. <laughs> clean, your, clean your pan with your food. And then you just take your bacon and just crumble it up into pieces like this. Hands get nice and greasy. That's okay. And then you lift the your the bacon off your fingers. No, that's that's not civilized, honey. Come on. This is a very very high class home, act respectable. Mm-hmm. What would the neighbors think? I don't care. It's terrible. <laughs> you know, no, people in northern Maine are very high class uh, people. Yes. We actually saw something yesterday. I got to tell everybody about this. Um, we're out of tractor supply, and then for the very first time in my life, I saw something in the back seat of a truck. It was a crew cab truck, had the two rear doors, you know, and the, the two front doors. And walked out, and I see this brown fur like thing in there, and I thought, oh, we've got a dog, and maybe two dogs, or they're kind of big. Got a little bit closer, there's three calves. Okay, baby cows. <laughs> uh, three of them. 
in the back seat. I thought, well, okay, that's a record for me. I've never seen that before. They don't and so that was pretty good. But there's the chicken, put the chicken in. Okay, put this in the sink. Just gotta wash my hands off here quick. Not gonna lick them for the camera, but it was suggested to me. We'll get into that. Don't pick on me. Terrible. I like to be natural. I know it. So, then all you do, down here, is you just stir it all together, like that. And the, the bacon obviously is already cooked. The chicken was cooked the other day. Just had his leftovers. And um, so it doesn't need to be cooked really long to make sure everything's okay. It's, there, it's already pre-cooked. So. And you just let it warm up essentially like that. And you're ready to serve it. And it sounds like our tea kettle is about finished. About ready to throw a fit. And if you're from the UK, you might recognize this type of tea kettle. It's an older one. And uh, it is a simplex tea kettle made in, in England. So again, we bought that used many years ago. Amazing the kind of things that you can find at used stores, and you know, like Goodwill stores or antique shops or whatever else. A lot of our stuff is antique. <laughs> so. I thank the Lord for antiques. Yep. This thing cleans up really, really beautifully as well with the brass and the copper and everything. But uh, there it is, our Simplex tea kettle. So, be right back. All right, we're all done. Ready to serve in our Union State Bowl. Oh boy. Showed the Confederate State one earlier in one of our other videos. So, let's put it in there and Keep your hands away from the bottom because it's really hot. Really, really good meal. Gives you energy. We only eat two meals a day, eat in the morning and eat in the evening. And this will carry you through all day when you're working hard. So, highly recommend this as a meal. And there you go. Sausage, bacon, chicken, uh, onion, and two different types of beans, yellow-eyed beans and soldier beans. A really good meal. Give it a try. All right, here we are in the spaceship. No, I'm just kidding. It's just an old school bus. Uh, it looks like a spaceship almost when you look at it like that. It's amazing. Um, we are busy taking seats out. As you can see, the ones on this side here um, have already been skinned. <laughs> this one here. Quality. Yeah, oh yeah, metal backing there. Um, this one here, what we do is we you take a utility knife and you cut along the back, get this red vinyl off this, well, maroon, whatever. And then there's the padding underneath it, and you pull that padding up and off. Then you got to cut the bottom of the vinyl and it comes off. You just pry it off. It's stapled on. You can see the staples right there and some old glue that's mm -hmm. Lord only knows how old and we already took the seat pads off the bottom but then over here you can see there's a two bolts I already have one out there on well it's nuts no, the whole way over there to the left and then there's another one right there and back in there like that and then down here this is the hard part with taking buses out of school, or yeah, taking buses out of seats. Yes, uh, taking the seats out of the bus. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Um, here you can see how the all the junk that they put on the road actually comes up through. It'll work its way up through metal like that, and uh, it's not just you know slush on the children's boots or whatever that does this. It comes right up through, and. Uh, you see all that white there around it, all that salt and everything. And um, these bolts that go down through there, you can grind the heads off and then just pry the thing up. But uh, put sparks all over the place. And, um, you know, might end up having to do that. But I'm going to try to snap the, the nuts off down underneath, which is going to be a real treat. You'll see why here in just a little bit. But 
just you know wonderful and i'm sure it doesn't do any damage to the streams in the spring when all this stuff melts and goes into the water never you know it wouldn't be possible if it was unsafe because the government would bankrupt the industry overnight sure absolutely and then you get all those nice wonderful pieces of gum that are years and years old like that there you know so good. funny yeah for gretchen she likes to eat them <laughs> um but it's funny that you know some child was chewing on that and they stick it in underneath the seat frame and it's there probably 10 12 years later mm -hmm. yeah um don't eat gum gum is not very good for you so and you can see out here outside how much snow we have left that's an ATV under the tarp there. Windows are pretty dirty, but that's what happens when you drive on dirty roads. But uh, yeah, the snow's pretty high yet. So I'll do a little bit more filming in underneath the bus. And we're gonna see if we can get these stupid seats out. All right, here we are. I'm gonna go underneath the bus. See a bunch of the parts of the school bus seats here but let me show you what i have to do to take this uh got this big breaker bar here you put a socket on the end of that and uh i have a long extension on it right now so i can get up into these these nuts up in here you know i deal with nuts all the time people on youtube in other words you can see how badly rusted these things are and there's one that we already broke off the other day I got to break that one off and then that one will come out but that hole back there I got those two off I did spray some WD-40 and the one came off the other one just locked up totally so but so you can see here Let's see if I can get this there's two there Two there, two there. They kind of alternate going down through there, all the way down through. There's the big old differential right there where my foot's pointing. And uh, man, it's going to be a fun task. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. Okay. This one's going to snap, I can tell. Well, maybe not. It might actually come off. Oop, there it went. Okay, done. Yep. And there you go. You can see it snapped off. And then what we do is take an old bolt right here, put it in through the back. See, like that. And you just take it. And there it comes out. There you go. Do it like this so you can actually see it. Yeah. Drop it into the toboggan that I'm laying on. And I don't know how many more we have to go. <laughs> Quite a few. There's the next ones. Okay, they, they actually come through the brace there or whatever. All right. All right. Well, change of plans. We got about halfway done, and what we're discovering is the whether whether mechanics or at the factory or whatever else a lot of the nuts underneath are actually rounded over so i put my ratchet or my socket up on it and i try to get any kind of grip on it and not happening so a lot of them are snapping off but you know i'm gonna have to use the grinder to get a couple of these off so i just said well you know what the grinder is a lot quicker so if you're ever wanting to take school bus seats out use an angle grinder and uh just get down in there and get a metal grinding disc and just grind the heads of the bolts off and then everything just comes right out and it's fine so <laughs> but thankfully we had a good breakfast this morning so still feeling still feeling really good so that is going to be it thank you for watching